So, hello everyone, good afternoon. My name is Pranothi, and um, today I'll be talking uh, to you guys about how to accelerate your research uh, using this new tool that uh, Springer Nature has been working on called Nano. And uh, in the interest of time, I'll just directly cut to the, uh, get straight to the point. Um, as you probably already know, the field of nanoscience and technology is, um, is a booming field. It's ever growing, as you can see in terms of patents and the articles. Uh, this is good in the sense that it shows that it's an exciting field and it's very interesting, la la la. However, the problem um, or the other side of the coin being the challenges that are faced by the researchers like you are that there is a lot of data. There's a lot of information out there that is being published every day. That's one, um, that, that's one challenge. The second challenge is that the information that has been published is scattered all over the place. It's in different journals, in different patent offices, and it's very difficult to keep an overview of what's going on or where the field is going or uh, what the, the group in the other countries are doing. So it's a bit difficult uh, in that sense. And uh, in principle, it's also very difficult, uh, or it, it's a bit challenging and time consuming to do literature reviews when you are um, writing a research grant, or you're writing your paper, or you're designing your experiment and trying to find the right recipe to prepare some sort of uh, nanomaterial that you're working on, or, or deposition of thin film. So it's a, it's a bit of a challenge to find the right amount of or right information as quickly as possible. Now this is where um, uh, there are the data tools or databases, they're called, or repositories, which offer a solution. And for different, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, so for different fields of science, like physics, chemistry, engineering, biology, medicine, there are different kinds of tools which are available. However, material science and nanoscience sits at the interface of all of these, uh, all of these different scientific fields, and a database or a repository which collects all the information about nanoscience and technology at this point does not exist, and that's where uh, Springer Nature decided to um, create a repository for with the focus on uh, nanoscience and technology that would cover the literature from all different walks of um, walks of science. Uh, as it sits at the interface, as I mentioned. Uh, and that's what Nano, and this is what I will be talking to you guys today. Uh, I will show you one more slide as to what the content is. Um, now you have understood where the idea came from, what it was the story behind that. And now at this point, uh, the content can be understood in three parts. So we have nanotechnology articles from more than 190 different, uh, different journals from other publishers as well. And after this slide, I will take you directly to the platform so you get the feeling for how it actually works and how you can work around with it. Um, so first is nanotechnology articles, then we have nanomaterial summaries. I will get into the detail of what these nanomaterial summaries mean and what kind of information you can retrieve uh, from this database. And the third uh, leg, a very important leg is the patents. And we have at this point more than 23 million patents on the database. All right, let's go to the platform now. So. Oh, do, 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 do. There we go. Yeah, so that's the URL, nano.nature.com. This is how the platform looks like. As I mentioned, the content can be understood in three different parts. So we have nanomaterial summaries, the articles and patents, and we'll go into the details um, just in a moment. Uh, now let's do a quick, simple, uh, a very vague search. Um, of, uh, if, if you put in a search term such as graphene, what you see is that the numbers, the numbers here have already shrunk. They are still significantly high numbers to go through for the information that you might be looking for. However, at least the patent number has reduced from 23 million to about 170, uh, 171,000. All right, now what does this nanomaterial summary mean? The, what, is this, uh, what, what this uh, gives you is 
uh, all the information about characterization, property, all these tabs that you see below, all this information is extracted manually by our subject matter experts, and the subject matter experts are a team of more than 70 people uh, who have a scientific background, either a PhD or at least a master's degree. Uh, and their job is to go through the scientific articles and take out the information manually and put it in the system. And the information, I keep saying information, information, data, data, what is this, what does this look like? Uh, first of all, the information that you will see below, all this, oh, sorry about that. So all this information that we will go into in a moment has uh, been manually extracted from these many articles and these many patents. And the most recent information uh, in case of graphene is from 2019, which makes sense because it's still a hot, hot topic, as you might agree. <laughs> All right, now let's get into the details of what this, um, the, the different parts of the nanomaterial summary, what, how does that look like? Now imagine you're working with graphene and you want to quickly look for the resistivity, electrical resistivity of graphene. Did I misspell it? Oh, let's do conductivity. Oh, sorry about that. It should work. <laughs> it, it worked on my computer. <laughs> Properties. Okay, so the point I, was, I wanted to show you was um, if you look for a particular property such as electrical conductivity or electrical resistivity or any, any of the properties which has a numerical value, if the numerical value is available in the original source, which in this case would be here, the value will be uh, displayed over here together with the unit. If the value is not available, if one value is not available and it's more of a plot or a curve or a, or a range or it's a subjective um, value that has been reported, then it will say details in the source and you can always read the, uh, the original paper just by clicking on it. If it's an experimental paper, it will say experiment in. If it's a theoretical paper, it will say uh, calculation in, if it's a patent, then it will say claimed in XYZ patent. Similar tables will pop up when you go from, for all of these tabs from property, application, characterization, biological effects, and my personal favorite is uh, the preparation tab because uh, during my master and my PhD I did my fair share of uh, preparation of carbon nanotubes and graphene and P.PSS and uh, all these uh, nanomaterials. And what you can do here is, why this is my favorite is because, does this one work? Yes, it does, to some extent. Chemical. So the point I, I want to show you here is that you can filter the, uh, the number of results that you see if you have a particular method in mind. For the preparation, let's say you want to do chemical vapor deposition, you don't care about all the other uh, like mechanical exfoliation or all the other liquid phase exfoliation and stuff like that. If you want to focus on chemical vapor deposition, you can just put it in the, in the search bar and the results will be adopted accordingly. And uh, the reason why this section is my favorite is because instead of um, having the information in, the, in an article in, in form of maybe 20 lines, the information is um, displayed in a way which is easy to, scan, uh, uh, easy to go through. So it looks like a cooking recipe of sorts. Like this is your ingredients that you are gonna need, then you have to follow these steps, and your end product is gonna be this. This is what you should expect. So now what this offers you is that you can quickly compare between the different methods of preparing graphene following chemical vapor deposition, and then you can decide, okay, well, I do have germanium, I have methane, maybe I go for this, but maybe I don't have an oven that goes to 900 degrees Celsius, so as you can just go to the next one. Oh, my oven goes to 1,070 degrees Celsius. Maybe I try this recipe. What it does is it takes the information, like what we have done is we have taken the information out of the paper and displayed it in the way that is easy for you to go through. And if this uh, is something that fits with what you're looking for, you can always go to the original paper over here. Just by clicking on it, you will be redirected to the paper. 
So this is the nanomaterial summaries, which is the first part of the, of the um, nano database. Now well, let's go back and go to the articles tab. And as I mentioned, we have articles uh, from other publishers as well, because we, of course, we cover the journals which are uh, covering um, nanoscience and technology um, related articles from Springer and Nature. However, we also cover um, journals from other publishers, as you can see here. And the results that you see on the right over here can be uh, filtered based on the publisher, the journal, or the year of publication, depending on what you're looking for. Now, this is where the artificial intelligence kicks in. Because of the number of publications that have been published every day, we can't possibly manually read this. Um, so now, the artificial intelligence, what it does is it goes through the full text of the article and takes out the information or customizes the summary for every article based on what you are looking for. And this is what you see over here. This article discusses everything that you see in front of this article discusses is coming out of the artificial intelligence algorithm that goes through the full text of the article. And I'm stressing on the fact that it goes through the full text because not every finding or every uh, keyword finds a place in the title or in the abstract of the article that you, you probably already know this. Um, what is the advantage in this case? The advantage is that you do not miss out on any of the articles that are relevant for you in the sense that if the title does not contain what you are, or, or the title doesn't contain or the abstract doesn't contain the keyword that you search for in the search bar, it, the, the article might not pop up in the other data tools that you might be using, for example, Google or sorts. Um, and this is where the advantage is, uh, because we go to the full text of the article. The, uh, the algorithm goes to the full text of the article and takes out the information that is the most relevant for you. And this information or this summary will be different for every article and for every search. If this article is popping up for other kinds of search, such as silicon carbide or something like this, then the summary will be customized based on that search. Yeah, so this is the advantage of the, the artificial intelligence powered article search, abstracting and indexing. Now let's go to the third leg, which is the patents. Uh, and the number is quite big. I was quite astonished by the number, which is 23 million. And that's because we cover patents which go uh, far back as 1920, so almost 100 years of patents. And we cover more than 95 jurisdictions all over the world. Yeah. Uh, now, what is the, the beauty in this patents tab is that uh, you can filter, first of all, you can filter the results based on the country of assignee. The, f uh, the filing year, the jurisdiction, as you want. And let's say uh, you want the jurisdiction of Korea, because, well, why not? Uh, what we do here also, we use the artificial intelligence. So I don't know how familiar you, are, you guys are with uh, reading patents and uh, understanding the language of the patents. When I started my PhD, I was advised to uh, go through patents as well, but I just had no idea how it works and where to find the patents and wh how it works and wh what do I read. Some patents are like 50 pages long and I have no idea how to read it. So what we do here is uh, the the in a patent, the most important part in a patent is the claim. The claim is the one which gives you uh, an overview or an idea of what the patent is talking about. And the first claim usually is the most important, and the other claims are based on the first claim. So it's usually it's sufficient if you read the first claim to understand if this patent is worth your time. What we do here in, uh, on Nano is that we go one step further. We take the first five claims from the original patent and translate them into English and display them on the platform here. So you can easily skim through the patents. Sorry. Uh, you can skim through the claims and read, OK, this, is, this sounds interesting, but not really what I'm looking for. You can just hide the claims, move on to the next claim, uh, next patent and go through the claims and decide, so on and so forth. So what it does is it offers you the opportunity to go through the patents 
or use patents as part of your literature review process um, because patents are also providing quite an important uh, scientific information. So in a nutshell, in a very big nutshell here, Nano is um, uh, Nano was built or is being developed as well with the idea of bringing all the information about nanoscience and technology under one umbrella, and it consists of nanomaterial summaries, articles, and patents. Um, if you have any questions, please ask now, or you can also ask um, me or my colleague Alisa. We will be around during the lunch time and also. Um, for the rest of the day, and I will also be available tomorrow. Uh, so thank you very much for your attention, and I look forward to getting your questions. <laughs>